friends, welcome to Plexus Ortho. My name is Dr. Kanan Kumar and today we are going to discuss one of the MCQs that we put up a couple of days ago in the Telegram channel, right? So the MCQ that uh, we are going to discuss is uh, 244, the one uh, that we put up is 244 and uh, the MCQ was which is the most common incomplete cord injury, right? So all of us know about complete cord injuries, there's a complete transaction, there's a complete loss of sensation, there could be a quadriplegia if it affects the cervical spine, it could be a paraplegia if it affects the thoracic spine, right? And um, so the question, cut. The question that is, is, question is asking what is the most common incomplete cord injury? A lot of people uh, got this question wrong. Uh, it is not brown secret syndrome, even though the brown secret syndrome is the most uh, um, you know interesting of all these incomplete cord injuries the most common incomplete cord injury is the central cord syndrome right the central cord syndrome is the involvement of the central portion of the central cord it usually occurs in the cervical spine region it occurs in older patients with, who have a whiplash injury who have a pre-existing cervical spondylitis so we'll discuss this in a little more detail so the important thing that you must know is the most common syndrome is the central cord syndrome and uh, followed by the anterior cord syndrome and then the brown secret syndrome the posterior cord syndrome is very rare and is very unlikely to occur okay so these are the four common incomplete um, cord uh, cord injuries and the most common among these is the central cord injury and not the brown secret injury uh, most of people most people got this question wrong it's not an easy question but i hope after you hear this video out uh, you will be in a better position to answer these questions so let's go to the basic anatomy of uh, the spinal cord a little bit about the ascending and descending tracts all of you know this very well but so we must have a basic understanding of the descending and ascending tracts to understand what these syndromes and what problems occur in these uh, incomplete cord injuries so we have the descending tracts which come from the brain or the brain stem and down to the uh, end organ that is the muscles so these are the motor tracts, right? Descending tracts are the motor tracts. There are lateral spinal, la lateral corticospinal tract, which is also which is motor, and we have the ventral corticospinal tract. They do not cross over. They supply the same side uh, area of the. They descend down at the same level. They do not cross over at the spinal cord level. That is very important. Ascending tracts. Ascending tracts are usually sensory in nature. They, they, I mean, they provide sensation. You know the posterior columns or the dorsal columns, posterior dorsal columns provide fine touch and proprioception and vibration. Fine touch, proprioception and vibration is provided by the posterior tracts. The lateral spinothalamic tract uh, provides pain and temperature sensation and the ventral spinothalamic tract provides light touch. These cross over, that is the lateral and the ventral spinothalamic tracts, they cross over to, to uh, spinal segments below the level where there is they are injured okay so they cross over to the opposite side and then they supply the sensation of the opposite side this is important in understanding the brown sequet syndrome okay to briefly uh, re uh, reiterate we have the descending motor tracts and we have the ascending sensory tracts okay and it's important to remember that the spinothalamic or the um, uh, pain and temperature tracts cross over to the opposite side two spinal segments below the level that they are injured at so now let's go to the first syndrome that is the most common incomplete uh, uh, spinal cord injury the central cord syndrome right we're going to go and we, uh, discuss about the central cord syndrome this is the most common it is counterintuitive we all assume that the brown secret syndrome is the most common it is not the central cord syndrome is the most common it occurs in older age patients okay, more than 60 years of age with a whiplash kind of injury with a whiplash kind of injury with a pre-existing cervical uh, spondylitis so even a small amount of injury causes a whiplashing of the uh, spinal cord and then causes central edema of the central edema and damage of the spinal cord so the distinguishing feature between other uh, incomplete cord injuries and the central cord uh, syndrome is that it uh, disproportionately affects the upper limbs more than the lower limbs and the reason for this is the upper limb tracts are more central whereas the uh, lower limb tracts are more distal or away from the central area and therefore the upper limb is more commonly involved than the lower limb 
the lower limb may have some kind of functional motor loss but the uh, functional loss is more in the upper limb and uh, you have the sensory loss in the hands followed by the other parts of the upper extremity then you have the lower extremity involvement so disproportionate involvement of the upper extremity as compared to the lower extremity indicates it's a central cord syndrome is usually seen in older individuals they recover very well there is good prognosis for this uh, surgery is controversial in these cases right and uh, so this is the most common syndrome central cord syndrome involvement of the central portion of the spinal cord because of a of a whiplash injury flexion extension injury of the cervical spine common in uh, cervical spondylitis or some kind of uh, uh, pathology in the cervical spine okay so disproportionate involvement of the upper limb as compared to the lower limb indicates central cord syndrome this has good prognosis next come to the next syndrome next syndrome is the anterior cord syndrome anterior anterior cord syndrome this is the second most common syndrome this involves the anterior portion of the spinal cord why does this happen the most common reason that happens is direct compression of the anterior cord because of trauma okay so there's some bony abnormality or bony fracture which compresses the anterior portion of the uh, spinal cord can cause the second injury to the anterior spinal artery which supplies the anterior two thirds of the um, spinal cord can also cause anterior cord syndrome this happens in case you know very commonly in tb spine it can happen in case of some kind of thrombosis or some vessel damage that can co it causes ischemia of the anterior spinal artery and therefore causes damage to the anterior two thirds of the spinal cord so what will this affect this will entail loss of function more uh, motor function more in the lower limb as compared to the upper limb loss of function more in the lower limb as compared to the upper limb however because the posterior portion is preserved or the posterior tracts are preserved dorsal columns are preserved proprioception and vi vibration are not affected right pain touch temperature and motor function is affected but dorsal columns are not affected and therefore proprioception and vibration are unaffected and more involvement of the lower limb as compared to the upper limb indicates it is an anterior cord syndrome this is less common than the central cord syndrome but more common than brown sequel so this is the second most common incomplete spinal injury so you must have a clear understanding of why it happens it happens most commonly in two uh, two causes one is trauma direct trauma to the anterior portion of the spinal cord and the second one is injury to the anterior spinal artery injury to the anterior spinal artery these are the two causes for anterior cord syndrome the prognosis is slightly poorer than central cord syndrome but they do reasonably well these patients do reasonably well the next or the third most common uh, type of incomplete uh, uh, spinal cord injury is the brown sequet fitz syndrome the brown sequet syndrome all of us know it very well because it's a named syndrome right it is very common in the west because uh, there is a due to a penetrating injury to the one side of spinal cord it's less common in india you either have to have a penetrating injury through a knife or a bullet or some kind of ipsilateral type of injury which is very uncommon in india uh, it is very common in the west because of the bullet type of injury that we uh, encounter but it is very commonly asked question in exam so you must know it very well so it involves one side of the it involves one side of the of the spinal cord it involves the hemi section of the spinal cord and as i said it, it is due to penetrating injuries that is the most common cause of brown sequet syndrome so as we all know we discussed in the initial slide that uh, the uh, motor uh, uh, tracts descend without crossing over well so when you have uh, this kind of a brown sequet kind of syndrome you have ipsilateral motor loss so you have ipsilateral uh, you have ipsilateral motor function loss and you have ipsilateral Uh, vibration and uh, proprioception loss because the dorsal columns also do not cross over we know this very well whereas you have pain and temperature loss on the opposite side or contralateral side and this happens two segments below the level of the injury that is the level at which it crosses over therefore ipsilateral motor and uh, vibration loss contralateral ipsilateral motor and vibration loss contralateral pain and temperature loss two segments below the level of the injury this is the brown sequet syndrome
literature says that brown sequard syndrome recovers very well they have good prognosis okay so this is the uh, third most common type of uh, incomplete uh, spinal cord injury and this is the brown sequard syndrome next let's come to the last one an extremely rare one which is the posterior cord syndrome posterior cord syndrome is involvement or ischemia of the posterior one third of the uh, spinal cord it's extremely rare uh, in isolated posterior cord syndrome is quite rare and as you can see it most mostly affects only the dorsal column so proprioception vibration sense of balance is all lost with this kind of a syndrome can uh, happen with cervical spondylitis can happen with uh, trauma but it's extremely rare patient does not have any motor loss or pain on temperature loss so the posterior cord syndrome is basically the posterior one third of the spinal cord is involved so let's go through a brief recap of the incomplete spinal cord injuries uh, incomplete spinal cord injuries uh, are common the most common of these is central cord syndrome occurs in old age cervical spondylitis and with whiplash kind of injury the central cord edema occurs because of which the upper limb involvement is more than the lower limb involvement the next common one is anterior cord syndrome which occurs because of fractures and anterior spinal artery compression and this involves the anterior two thirds of the spinal cord and uh, will cause lower limb involvement more than the upper limb involvement and vibration and uh, proprioception is preserved because the posterior third of the spinal cord is intact. Brown sequard syndrome is a hemisection of the or hemisection injury of the spinal cord where ipsilateral motor and vibration sense is lost whereas contralateral pain and temperature two segments below the level of the injury is affected in brown sequard syndrome posterior cord syndrome is extremely rare and it involves the dorsal columns and therefore proprioception and vibration is affected and rest of the functions of the spinal cord are intact so this is in brief about incomplete spinal cord injuries and this i hope this clears most of your doubts regarding this topic my name is dr kanan kumar and this is plexus ortho thanks for hearing us out we will meet again thank you very much